Hello everyone and welcome back to our first video for 2019. My name is Raj Jiyut for Reckoner and today we are going to be taking a look at this guy. It is Motorola's Z3 Play phone. Now, I know you're already saying this did not come out in 2019, you'd be 100% correct. It did in fact come out in late 2018, but they have sent it to us and we are going to take a look at it nonetheless. So what is the Moto Z3 Play Android phone? Well, it is a very nice, very sleek looking and thin, 6.75 mils in fact, thin, uh, phone from the now Lenovo owned brand Motorola. Uh, the phone itself has a 6.1 inch AMOLED screen which is incredibly beautiful to look at and is very nice in what is essentially a mid-tier smartphone for this price range of Australian $799. Uh, it has a almost bezel-less screen as you would expect. It has a speaker grill at the top, camera, and then of course the bar along the bottom. The sides do have a slight black border, but they are nothing that really distract from how good this screen is for the price that you're getting at it. There is of course no headphone jack on the phone. They are pretty much dead these days. Instead you have USB-C, which is pretty much standard on every Android phone in the market today. Also in the box, they include a USB-C to three and a half mil adapter. So you can use your existing headphones on the phone very easily. They also include a set of earbud headphones in there with a three and a half mil adapter which aren't that great, but at least they give you a pair to use regardless. Uh, and lastly, on the exterior of the phone, there is glass front and back, and that is a fingerprint nightmare, as you would expect. Uh, and they also have the fingerprint sensor in a very interesting position that I really like. It's on the side of the phone, just below the volume buttons, which is in a position that every time I pick it up, I'm either putting my thumb on it or I'm grabbing it with the other hand. Uh, instead of taking up real estate on the front of the phone, I think it's quite a nice place to have it on the side there. And it works really well, which I did not expect it to do. On the inside of the phone, uh, it's running Android 8.1, that's Oreo, uh, and it does a good job. It actually, uh, with the AMOLED screen, gives this phone an extremely good battery life, considering it only has a 3000 milliamp battery inside of it, and that's because of the thing being so damn thin. Uh, I've got a full day's use out of it, no problems whatsoever. If you are a heavy user with social media, then you're probably going to want to look at one of the Moto Mod battery packs, which I'll get into in just a second. Also inside, it's powered by a Snapdragon 636 SoC, which is not the latest and greatest by any means, but for most people, it is going to do everything you need it to do, and you're not going to have any problems having multiple applications open or using the split screen functionality that Android provides. Uh, part of that Snapdragon 636 is a 1.8 gigahertz octo-core CPU and a Adreno, Adreno, sorry, 509 GPU, which is great for everything except for Fortnite. It, it is not supported by the GPU inside of the Z3. Uh, that could be problematic if you're buying this for uh, one of your teen kids or someone who obviously enjoys Fortnite. Um, regardless, there's also four gig of RAM, 64 gig of internal storage baked into the phone, but that is expandable to two terabyte with a micro SD card. Nothing unusual there for an Android device. The saving grace of what this phone offers for me is the camera on its back. For $799, you are getting a relatively decent phone in that mid-tier bracket, but the camera on the rear sort of sets it apart from some of its competitors. It's a dual lens, 12 megapixel, 1. f 1.7, and a 5 megapixel camera uh, lens, sorry, on the rear, which offer a true depth perception for things like portrait photography. Yes, the portrait mode inside of 
the Android offering here is very good and it is supported very much so by this dual array lens on the back. It's by no means the best of the Android world, but it is a good offering at that mid-tier range. The larger version of the sensor or the actual quality of the photos, well, that's something to be debated with, but it's not going to win any DxO Mark competitions, I'm afraid, but really good offering for what is included in the phone. But what really sets the Motorola brand apart these days is what they call Moto Mods. And those are a series of accessories that are available that clip onto the rear of the Z series of phones. <clears throat> Excuse me, they do that by connecting to this array of uh, connectors at the bottom of the phone and using a magnet system that holds it securely onto the back of the phone and there are up to around 16 different devices available in the Australian market that connect up to these guys. Everything from projectors to cameras to printers, uh, there's a whole range, car mounts, 360 degree cameras. There's quite a few out there, but a lot of them are manufactured by Motorola themselves, or there's a few third party people involved like Polaroid with an instant printer, uh, JBL for the speaker products and Hasselblad who make a camera lens uh, which is on the more expensive side of the Moto Mod range. Most of the Moto Mods set you back around 150 Australian dollars, uh, some a little bit more, some a little bit less. Uh, we were sent three of those to play. We were given the uh, Moto Gamepad, the Instant Printer from Polaroid and the Sound Boost from JBL. All of them clip straight onto the back of the phone. When they do so, the phone picks up that you've attached one, launches the Moto software inside of the phone to alert you to that fact. It's just a little bit of bloatware that they include, but nothing out of the uh, ordinary. And once it's connected, it will offer you some options, like for instance, connecting the Moto gamepad that will allow you to download uh, compatible games like Real Racing 3 or the Walking Dead series, um, <clears throat> not Fortnite obviously. Uh, when you connect the printer, you can download some, print, uh, some software that allows you to put stickers onto the photos, which then uh, you can send to the printer and away they go. Uh, and with the sound boost, for example, it just tells you that you've connected a speaker uh, and the sound starts playing through it. Uh, these are really cool and nifty. I don't know if I would use any of them other than perhaps the gamepad. The Sound Boost is a new version that's just about to come, has a really nice kickstand in it, so it does allow you to stand the phone up uh, and it plays the sound. It's not amazing, but it is better than what you can get out of the phone directly. Uh, the camera is kind of a... Mm, it's cool, but it's not something that you're often going to carry around. It also can only hold uh, 10 of the printable sheets in it at a time, so you're kind of limited in the amount of uh, photos that you're gonna print out. But you can print them out later, so there is that as an option. Um, as I said, each of these set you back around $150. Motorola are running a, a campaign at the moment where if you purchase the phone directly from their website, then you can choose from one of, I think it's about six Moto Mods that they offer to uh, come free with the phone. So that $7.99 retail price does get reduced somewhat by the accessory that you choose to bundle with it. That could be a quite a good deal for someone out there. That said, should you buy the Z3 right now? Well, that is up for debate because right now we are, as I record this, about four weeks away from Mobile World Congress where it is very expected that the Z4 is going to make an appearance and that will render this little guy a little redundant if it isn't already with that Snapdragon 636. That said, if you are in the Moto Mod accessory market and you really like that system because it does work surprisingly well uh, then it could be a good get or if you can hang out and wait until the Z4 gets officially announced and likely to release mid 2019 this guy is likely going to drop significantly in price and you can probably pick one up for two to three hundred dollars less than what they're retailing at now 
That's the short version. If you want the full review, you can get that over on the website. That's reckoner.com.au. And whilst you're there, why not check out our Patreon campaign? That allows us to create and do wonderful videos like this that we can present over to you and keep reviewing everything on the site. You can find out more details about that at reckoner.com.au forward slash Patreon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time and bye for now.